Hello everyone, we are Team Hydrayan, here to present our project as an official entry to Coricodon, a hackathon to combat illegal fishing in the Philippines. Let's begin by discussing the problems that we are aiming to solve with our project. The problems we found are as follows. The first one is the lack of coordination between different authorities and existing programs against illegal fishing. The second one is a limited reporting range because many coastal communities have unstable signal coverage mainly because of the fact that these communities are located in remote or underdeveloped rural areas. A third one is that the response time for illegal fishing activities can be slow or delayed due to poor communication infrastructure. And the fourth is that technology-based programs against illegal fishing can be expensive to implement. With these problems identified, let's proceed with a discussion of our solution. We decided to call our project Sentinel. Sentinel is an open IoT platform with real-time data processing that can be used to gather reports of illegal fishing activities and maritime incidents in different municipal waters without fully relying on expensive radio equipment or stable communication infrastructures. Sentinel works with the use of two main IoT devices called nodes and gateways. These devices talk to each other using LoRa technology which allows these devices to communicate in long range while keeping a relatively low power consumption. Node devices can be distributed to patrol authorities and fishermen which would allow them to report illegal fishing activities or use its lifeline to call for rescue once an accident at sea occurs. Gateway devices are responsible for listening to data from node devices and attempt to broadcast them to the internet. If a gateway fails to send the information to the internet, it then proceeds to rebroadcast the data. Both devices are programmed to form a mesh network, which means each data transmission is echoed from one device to another within its vicinity to increase its chances of reaching its destination, which in our case is a gateway device that can connect to our web application over the internet for data processing. Now that we know how Sentinel works, let's identify its key features. The first key feature is reporting. We wanted to support the reporting of illegal fishing activities and maritime incidents without fully relying on existing communication infrastructures. The second one is the response. We wanted to support real-time data processing and improve the safety of the people at sea by supporting emergency response monitoring. The last one is scalability. We want the platform to be scalable by keeping the devices and the software open sourced and can be easily be replicated and keeping it relatively cost effective. With the main features identified, let's begin by discussing the hardware aspect of the project and the hardware devices that make it work. Sentinel is made of small IoT devices communicating via LoRa technology which are, as discussed, the gateway and the node device. Let's begin by discussing the functionalities and the design of the node device. The node device is designed to work like a pocket Wi-Fi. It provides its own Wi-Fi network and allows users to connect using their smartphones or consumer electronics and access the internal built-in web page, which allows them to send illegal fishing reports, or a call for rescue. They can also set the profile in order to identify who they are and which municipal water they belong to. The second functionality is they can send distress signals using the buttons on the side of the device. And also, it echoes the reports from other devices in order to extend its range and increase its possibility of reaching the destination, which is the web service over the internet. This is a photograph of the actual hardware prototype of the Node device, which you can see on the left of the picture. On the right is a smartphone connected to the Node device using its own Wi-Fi network in order to allow it to access the web interface which users or patrolmen and fishermen can use to send their reports, which can either be an illegal fishing report or a call for rescue. The gateway device is designed to support the following features. 
it listens to any data transmission within its vicinity. It attempts to connect to the internet and send the data it got from the node devices to the web service. It needs to rebroadcast the data once it fails to connect to the internet and it also has an OLED display to show the status of its connection. This is a photograph of the actual hardware prototype for the gateway device. In its initial state, it is programmed to connect to an external Wi-Fi network in order to communicate to the internet. It can easily be extended to support other connection technologies like GSM. The cost of hardware development is determined by breaking down the electronic parts required to build the node device and the gateway device, which you can see in this table. With this information, we were able to identify that the cost of building one node device and one gateway device is about 1,821 pesos or approximately a budget of 2,000 pesos. You can build a pair of devices for this project. The price can still be brought down by bulk buying electronic components or refining the schematic diagram to have less components involved. The software aspect of our project is mainly composed of the web application which supports the following features. Real-time data visualization, fast analytics and search functionality, reviewing of reports of illegal phishing activities and distress calls, and it's all lightweight enough that it can be hosted on free services, making it a cost-effective part of the project. The technologies used for this project are as follows. The first one is Arduino for hardware and firmware development, LoRa, for the communication of the IoT devices, React for the development of the front-end web application, Mapbox for the mapping software, Node.js for the back-end, Socket.io for real-time connections, and MongoDB for the database. All of these technologies are chosen in order for the system to withstand future developments. For the deployment of our web application, we use the following services. The first one is Vercel for front-end hosting, Heroku for the hosting of the back-end, and MongoDB Atlas for the hosting of the database, all of which are functional for the free tier, which ensures that the web application is hosted and available on the internet without the need for monthly fees. For the project source code, all the source code for this project is free and open source. If you want to learn more, you can visit our GitHub organization Now let's proceed with the demonstration and see this platform in action.
that's all. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you so much for listening and please stay safe.